Ah, my crew. Okay. We know that uh, men are obligated to pray three times a day: shaharit, mincha, and arvit. This is connected the korbanot. There were korbanot, the uh, mincha, the tamid shel ben arbaim, tamid shel shachar. Every single day in the Beit Hamikdash, there were always two korbanot brought: one in the morning and one in the evening. The tefillah arvit is actually the shoot. We hold that, that uh, whereas the first two tefillot, mincha and shacharit, shacharit mincha, are obligatory, we actually hold that arvit is the shoot. That means that it's an option. However, the, it only is optional in the following regard. That if there's a conflict, that it's either the mitzvah of uh, the tefillah of arvit or some other mitzvah, there's a conflict between the two, I can only do one and the other, or, or, or the other, right? the other opportunity is going to pass, then we take the other mitzvah. But arvit, if in the absence of any sort of conflict, is a chiyu. That's for men. What about for women? So there is a machloket between the Rishonim, Rabban and Rabban. What is the obligation of women to pray? Bottom line is, is that for Ashkenazi women, they follow the ruling of the Ramban, which is that the tefillah is rabbinic, and the Chachamim, when they instituted the tefillah, they imposed the obligation of two tefillot on men and women. As we mentioned, Arvit, which is optional, the men accept it upon themselves, and women never accepted that upon themselves. But the original takana, the original requirement, was imposed on men and women, Shacharit and Mincha, and therefore, an Ashkenazi woman is required to pray twice a day, Shmon Asrei. According to the Rambam, however, the obligation of tefillah is really mid oraita. That means that every person, man and woman, has to give up a prayer, but the structure of the prayer is not mid oraita. That means every single day if a person just wakes up at some point and he offers some sort of bakasha, some sort of request, and a praise to Baruch Hu, mid oraita, he fulfills the obligation of the tefillah. Chachamim came and they instituted the format of the tefillah, but that was only really a requirement for men, as far as, like you mentioned, the, the, the two times a day plus arvit, as we've accepted upon ourselves as an option. Women only have to pray one shmona esrei per day, according to Sfar Kalacha. They're not required to do more than that. Of course, if they're able to, if they want to, tavore hen like the Gemara says, a person in which we could spend the entire day in tefillah. I'm sure Bezev would concur with that, right? The whole day in tefillah. But as far as the obligation, as far as the actual obligation, it's for a woman only one time a day. Preferably, it's, it's advisable, if she can, she should pray the shachari. But if that, as for many women, it's very difficult to find time in the morning because it's a very busy time, whether it's getting children out the door, getting to work, could be that shachari is very difficult for women, and therefore she could accept upon herself a different tefillah. Mincha, arvit, also would count as well. What about the tefillah of Musaf? Musaf is a little bit different because although the Gemara says that really women have to pray because what is prayer really? It's asking for mercy. What women don't require mercy, so of course women have to pray. They need mercy as well. Musaf though is a little bit different because Musaf is not really a prayer for mercy. We pray Musaf on Shabbat and Yamim Tovim as a commemoration of the Korban Musaf. We don't want to forget about the Korban Musaf that we had in the Beit HaMikdash. We don't have it now, but we pray the Tefillah of Musaf to commemorate that special Korban which was brought on Shabbatot and Yamim Tovim. Since it's not really a mercy tefillah, then technically speaking, women are exempt because they only pray because tefillah is mercy. But any tefillah which is not really rahamim, like tefillah musaf, we hold, Sardim hold that they're really exempt. Once a woman is exempt from the Shmona Asrei, the question becomes, does she even have the option of praying? So here we have a big machloket in the Sfarik poskim of recent times. It's brought down reliable Sfarim, Halichot Bat Yisrael, that even amongst the Sfarik poskim, such as Chacham Ezra Atiyah, who was the Rosh Shiva of Poret Yosef in Israel, Chacham Ovadiyah's Rebbe, his Rosh Shiva when he was, when he was a Bachur, and Ezra Atiyah is quoted as saying, as well as Chacham Ben Tzana Shaul, that even a tefillah which is optional for a woman, she's allowed to say. She's, just because she's not required does not preclude her from saying that tefillah. She's not obligated to, but it's something like Musaf, if she chooses to say the tefillah Musaf, she would be allowed to do so. Chacham Ovadiyah in general follows the position in Shulchan Aruch, which is that any mitzvah which a woman is exempt from, she is prohibited from making the bracha. So take a mitzvah like Sfirat Ta'omer. Take a mitzvah like Dulav Etrog, sitting in the sukkah. These are all mitzvot which women are technically exempt, because they're all time-bound mitzvot, positive time-bound mitzvot, mitzvah Ta'aseh, Shazman, Girama. Women are exempt. So even if they do them, they're not allowed to make a bracha according to Chama And therefore, in the Chama Vadiyah's early writings, in the Abiyah Omer, he really um, was reluctant to allow a woman to say the Shmona of Musaf. 
because since it's an optional tefillah, she should not be saying a Kaddish Baruch Hu's name for the green in vain. However, some idea and obviously a legendary career, if you will, when it comes to writing Sfarim, his final work in the Chazon Ovadia, which he did Besof Yamav. Chazon Ovadia was a voluminous work that he wrote, and it's really the final major series that he put together. In the Chazon Ovadia, he brings down that he's much more enthusiastic about allowing women to uh, say the Tfilat Musaf, based on a lot of Achronim, other Sfarim that he had seen since he originally wrote his original Tshuva in the Abiyah Omer. And therefore he writes that in the Chazon Ovadia, that uh, if a woman wants to say the Tfilat Musaf, then she should absolutely go ahead, and there's, there's really nothing wrong with that. She could even be encouraged to do so. One Tfilat Musaf, which is an exception to this rule, is the Tfilat Musaf of Rosh Hashanah Kippur. Because Tfilat Musaf of Rosh Hashanah Kippur really is mercy. Obviously, the days of Yamim Noraim, the days of Aseret Me Teshuvah, the Musaf that we have there is not merely a commemoration of the Korbanot, but that really is a Tfilat of mercy, and therefore, a woman absolutely should pray the Musaf of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur during the Aseret Me Teshuvah, because it's like all the other Tfilot of the year, which she prays because it's a manifestation of requesting for Rahmanut. Rabbi Hanel, Amen.